<laughs> Sister Straight, Straight Talk with Sister C has no money at the moment, but if you'd like to make a donation, we'd be glad to take them too. But this is what we want to do. We want to do things that will promote other organizations and other events. Just how we are. Did you hear something? Is that our closet door rattling again? I think again? so. Does somebody need to come out of the closet? Hey! Oh, hi, it's Jim Catino. How are you? It's awfully dark in that closet. Is it? I don't like Hi, honey. How are you? Well, it's been a long time since you were in the closet. How, how are, are you? you? Well, I came from the womb. Right out. No, I'm bothered with the closet. <laughs> yeah. It was just a, like a that fleshy closet door, huh? It's nice to see you. Thank you. For those out there who don't know who this man is sitting next to me, he is the um, director of AIDS. He's the president of AIDS, which stands for Association of Individuals Dedica Dedicated and Sincere. He's a wonderful person. Um, Jim has been a friend of mine for many, many years, so I'm so glad he's on the show. And he's only a second guest to come out of the closet, mm -hmm. which is a lot more fun for me. He didn't like the idea that I put him in the closet. But it's okay, he's, he enjoyed it, didn't you? Yes, it was, it was, it was cool. <laughs> Dark and frightening. Well, the last time you were there, I heard was the like the caveman days. So true, true. Did they have closets then? <laughs> no, they that they just days. moved a stone slab instead of a door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. Good. So you agreed to come here tonight and to tell us a little bit about the organization AIDS and an up and coming event you guys have. Yeah. Well, AIDS is a uh, local nonprofit, mm -hmm. all volunteers. We started 28 years ago. We raise our money ourselves, and then we provide quality of life uh, assistance to people with HIV and AIDS in Greater New Bedford and Fall River, whether it be like uh, beds, food. Uh, right now, we're in the planning stages for our Christmas family project. We do about 30-some-odd adults and 20-some-odd children uh, wish lists. We get them uh, food for the entire holiday meal. We do... Uh, clothing, uh, electric bills, anything like that that just mm -hmm. gives someone quality of life. Absolutely. I have noticed, though, every time you girls blink, I get this breeze over my head. Do you really? Must be the yeah. lashes. I hope I won't have a cold tomorrow. <laughs> I should have worn a hat. You may end up with a stiff neck. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be the first man on this couch to get one. <laughs> oh, I might want to get up. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we do have it. Why? Well, I mean, if I, who knows what went on in this couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We do have a, uh, a great event coming up, and I will say that both these lovely ladies uh, will be performing in our show. Our show is a mixture of uh, drag performance, live uh, dance performance, live singers. Um, it's really cool. It um, this year we're going to be at the Seaport uh, Inn in Fairhaven. Right across the bridge. The inn in Fairhaven. Yeah. And I would have spelt it, but I won't bother. Um, and it's $20 a person. And all, again, all that money comes into AIDS. And that goes into our, you know, our account uh, for, again, helping people with HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I say, both, uh, both of these lovely folks here will be performing in, in the numbers. A uh, matter of fact, you're in quite a few of the numbers, oh, actually. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. I am. Um, she is. And not always, uh, you won't always be looking as you do now. Mm, true, performing. true. Uh, and, and we do appreciate everything that the performers do. Thank you. The sister always uh, shows up Gotta when we need her. And um, so that's kind of like what's, what's going on with us. And at other times, we have a bowl -a thon which is coming up in... Oh, that's always fun, um, too. March, actually, the first weekend in March. We do oh, work. excellent. That's a really tremendous um, event for us. Mm -hmm. We bring in a, a whole lot of money. It's a fun event. Uh, sister came to the bowling alley. Uh, I'll be there again. I didn't see her throw a ball. Oh. And I won't touch that. You never that will. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> right there. The she piece, always, the she always sister keep, does with the balls. And not, she not, always keeps them close to her. her. Yep. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Tucked and tied. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that, that is a very good um, fundraiser for us. And I, I do have to say, 
um, as I was stuck out in that dark closet, I did hear you speaking with uh, Linda, and Linda is actually a director uh, on AIDS Incorporated, and um, I've heard a lot about the Women's Conference, but uh, even though I'm such a good friend of hers, you think she would allow me to go? No. No. You know, they could, they could make so an exception to the three of us, but word. that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I just won't talk any more about the Women's <laughs> Conference that's coming up very shortly Absolutely. for women. It's, and it's before um, the AIDS event. Yeah, yes, so, it's yes. before, before yes, our AIDS event. And so, um, you know, that's a cool thing. And AIDS tries to uh, take part in community events. Always. With other organizations, with the Great Innovative Community Health Center. As a matter of fact, uh, we help some of the uh, folks down there, as well as at uh, like Star and Fall River, Project Care. Mm -hmm. They send us the referrals. That's where we get oh, okay. the referrals for our uh, assistance program. For the needy family. And um, in, almost on a side note, we've also, uh, AIDS has taken to uh, helping get food to the homeless on the streets of New Bedford. Um, whether they're truly homeless or they're just having difficulty uh, with the way things are, uh, the times being what they are. Some people can afford an apartment, but they can't afford groceries, right. literally. Well, yeah, and, really. Um, I've had talks with many uh, great people uh, that are down there. They're not all... Uh, Drunks, as people expect them to be, they're not all drug drug addicts. Some um, some men and women, it just happens, mm -hmm. just, and that's where they end up. So we get down there with uh, food that we receive that is uh, donated to us. We don't take money out of the AIDS account. That is strictly for HIV funding. So that if anybody donates to us, we're not using your money to go to non HIV right. uh, assistance. This is all money that we're raising, uh, you know, Separately. on the side, and we get uh, clothing donations, we get food donations, so we're taking bags of food um, and clothing Excellent. Uh, down into the center of the city of New Bedford. And, Wonderful. Uh, we do hope that will uh, never come to a come to an end for any reason, mm -hmm. uh, since it's very needful, and everybody in the community needs to get involved with that because. Who's to say any one of us could, at some point, for some reason, end up uh, without a place, right. you know, to sleep at night? Absolutely, and it's it's a difficult situation for, yeah. you know, anyone that's out there. A lot of people say, "Oh, I understand," but you know, unless you've actually been there, you can't understand. Right. And to say, "Oh, Taylor, you and I are going to be homeless for a day." We know it's going to end. Oh, I've been there. You know, we know it's going to end. We know we're going back to our apartments right. the next day. They don't have an apartment to go back to. They don't know what's going to come next. It's kind of a scary thought if you actually put it all in perspective. But now, with AIDS, yeah. you guys do all your own funding. Mm -hmm. you, the money you get, you use for individuals, as you said, who are infected. Um, or in, and in some cases, with like the Christmas programs, with the children of, fa of people who are infected, but they're not. So you help the whole family, yeah. which is actually... The thing a lot of people don't think about is that those individuals in their lives have families, have families, yes. and those people mean a lot to them. So if you can help them through your Christmas fund to drive a happier, healthier home, in essence, it's helping a patient. True. Uh, many times the service we provide helps the infected as well as the affected. Mm -hmm. And if it's the mother or father or caregiver who is infected, the children, you know, infected, the children are affected by that, and we don't think uh, they should be treated any, you know, differently than any other child. Right, and, absolutely. And uh, they deserve to have something to open on Christmas absolutely. morning. Absolutely. And if the child is, is the individual who is infected, uh, and the parents are, uh, they, they deserve it, because the families that were helping in the Christmas uh, program would not have a holiday without what we're doing. These are people who are living can... anywhere from two to three hundred percent below the poverty level, and uh, many times we we bring the gifts and the food into their apartments, and we see uh, just how devastating the economy has been on their lives. So, at least they have uh, at least half of what they put on their 
wish list. We give them, you know, the meal to have for the next day. And uh, sometimes we try to keep an eye and follow them mm -hmm. uh, to see if they have other needs. Absolutely. And, um, you know, and, and you yourself know a lot of what we do because you've, you've been uh, attached to AIDS. You're not a director, but you're a, uh, a very important uh, friend and supporter of AIDS. And that's Absolutely. something that we do need. Uh, and you've been very, very helpful to uh, oh, anything to help AIDS. So I'm always there. Well, Rob was appreciative of that. And even though you know we're a five hundred one c three, you know we have a board of directors, an elected elected board, and um, I I am still answerable to you know the attorney general's mm -hmm. office and the okay. IRS. So uh, you know we have legal documentation for all of that. Good, good. Well, I'm very pleased to be a part of everything you guys do. Absolutely. Um, yeah, this has been incredible. And you yourself, every time there's something comes up in the community. Your gym's right there. Well, You're I always will there to help. sharing the stage with you. You, you will. have something coming up. I, we have the children's Christmas benefit, our 11th one, and uh, it's going to be at La Place, November 3rd, mm -hmm. and Sister Penny will be there with me. Oh. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've done this for 11 years. The money we raise that we do with an association with AIDS, they work with us on this, is directly goes to the children who are HIV positive. We, it just sponsors the Christmas family for those who are infected, affected. We strictly get gifts for the infected child mm -hmm. so that they could have that little bit extra. This started 11 years ago with uh, six people sitting around a bar saying that, you know, one of them had met a little boy in Boston who was extremely ill in an infectious disease department. And um, the adults around him were squawking and whining and moaning and the little boy sat there and it was apparent he was very sick. And he sat there perfectly quiet with nothing to do because all the magazines in that department were designed for older mm -hmm. people. And this person came back and said, can we raise money to help these kids and give them um, Game Boys? They had just come out back then, really popular. And uh, we said, sure. And then we had to find the children because, you know, anonymity is a big part of their lives. So, and protecting the child is number one. So yeah, we started this 11 years ago, and um, some, actually some of the kids Linda had mentioned earlier um, had received gifts from our Christmas program. And we're still going strong. Uh, we spread out a little bit. We're up into a couple of kids from Brockton and one from Rhode Island that's come to our attention and we try to help. But yes, November 3rd at La Place, it's the 11th annual Christmas, Children's Christmas Fun. Mm -hmm. And what are the ages of the children Of the that children? You well, the youngest one right now on present is uh, he is three years old this year. And then we have a six-year-old and there's a couple of eight-year-olds and then they jump to like 15, 16, 17. We go up to the age of 18. When the uh, young person is under the age of 16, we try to give them the gift that they want, be a PlayStation or uh, we've been asked for a bedroom set, a little princess bedroom set. We've been asked for a rocket bike. Um, we've been asked for a lot of things, and we've always managed to be able to get that for them to make their lives a little more special when they have to go through so much more hell. Mm -hmm. um, the medications uh, our former guest Linda spoke about, and now imagine she mentioned the difference between a 300-pound man and a 120-pound woman. Now now put a kid whose body isn't even fully developed yet and put those drugs into them. It must be scary. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, when I was that age, you know, the last thing that will ever cross my mind was my health. Oh. And, and I'm sure these children uh, have no choice but to grow up knowing, you know, what's gonna keep continuously transpire in their lives mm. and that they have to continue to take these meds because to date, uh, the medications that you start on, you don't end. Right. I mean, they, they're gonna have this virus, even though it may become undetectable with, with the meds that they have today, it is still there, and this is something that they're going to live with. Right. And it affects them, you know, physically, psychologically. And that's another reason why at Christmas time, the holidays, we feel we should do what we can uh, to give them a little bit of yeah. something. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know? It's a wonderful thing. And it gives us something, you know, it makes us feel good. Right. Uh, knowing that they're going to have something for Christmas. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the ideas works all year long, very hard, yeah. helping many, many individuals on a daily basis. I've seen it myself. So have I. You've 
I, I've seen you cut checks to help somebody who's coming out of prison, who is newly infected, to get their IDs mm -hmm. and their birth certificates, which pe they can't live without mm -hmm. and they don't have anymore So after being in prison. So this really helps them out. And it makes a big difference in the community. It really does. Oh, we hope so. I mean, we've been doing it for 23 years. So, and you know, just still doing it, which is great. To, uh, in about another year and a half, we've already started planning for, you know, it'll be our 25th, our silver anniversary. So we're going to have We're going to have to bring the dineros in for that one. Celebration. A uh, year long celebration. Great. Excellent. Yeah, so oh, I'm yeah. going to spray paint myself silver. Oh, okay. There you go. I just can't wait. <laughs> Please spray paint. She can break into her makeup box. She can get herself silver in no time. Yeah, because I think, I don't know how true it is. If you spray yourself totally, you can Well, there's a, you, you, there's a patch in your back you have to leave open. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. you have to be careful. My the oxygen will <laughs> just deplete. Oh, I don't breathe out of my ass, though. So I'd have to leave it up. Shame. No, it's actually in the oh. middle of the back is where you're supposed oh, to leave bare. Yes. Yeah, have you done that before? Mm. Oh, you've sprayed yourself. Oh, I haven't what sprayed myself. Of? Someone else sprayed. You? Yeah, it was, it was uh, rubber latex. It was very fun. It was. Rubber mm -hmm. latex. Mm -hmm. we'll, bring, we'll bring you back on the show for the kinky episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, now. Maybe well, that should be our first on-the-road show. I had a lot of fun. We should say, if they still have the exotic ball, where they have the big uh, thing up in Boston, where they have all the fetish fair, we should take the show on the road to the fetish fair. That could be fun. Yeah. I bet they wouldn't even know what it says. Mm-mm. No, nope, we would fit right in. Oh, Nobody yeah. would just blend right oh, into the yeah. background, wouldn't No it problem. Uh, Fetishes, rubber, latex. Mm. Mm, potty time. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> if it's rubber and latex, you're talking safe already. Right. So we're working on it. Right. Yes, that is very important. Safe yes. sex. Someday. Or no sex. As, as much, Abstinence is an excellent way of... Actually, helping. one day I'd love to be able to sit here and say, do you remember when we had HIV and AIDS and people were sick? Oh, I can't That'd be wait a wonderful that day. day that yeah. we could actually say... That's was, instead of that is. Right. We've been saying that is for an awful long time. But we have seen the uh, progress, the evolution, the progression you, in the with the evolution, what it used to be. With the evolution of the new drugs and treatment therapies, do you think it's making it harder to find money and to find funding and to get people to care about this issue as much as they did before? Well. The financial aspect has changed considerably because they've, they've gone more into what everybody hears is the medical model. So a lot of like uh, case management programs have, be, have been shut down. Mm. Uh, just recently, you know, the uh, HIV uh, house, so to speak, uh, was shut down, you know, and is moving to a different model. So that does make it much more difficult. Does. You know, there was a time if you said, I'm raising money for HIV and AIDS, they threw their wallet at right. you. Now you're lucky if they smile at you, you know, and then you have to, you know, now figure so, it out. As, we, as the population gets larger, through the keeping the medication, I just need to put this in perspective. Population gets larger because with infection rates not slowing down that much and living longer with the virus, we technically need more money mm -hmm. and now it's harder to get money. Right. And you have to address totally different needs because more than 50% of the population who are infected are over 50 years of age. So you're addressing not only HIV in these individuals, you're, uh, you're also addressing what comes with old age. Not that I would know any of that, oh, okay. but you know, the, you know, uh, cardiac, respiratory, all the things that come just from an, un, you know, for someone who is uninfected, now throw in that mix right. HIV. And you know, it's, it's a considerable problem. Wow. And yet funding is shrinking. Oh. So, Well, we will continue to work right by your side. We wish Always. you the best. We want to thank you for coming on the show tonight and chatting with us. Thank you. We love you, Jimmy. We'll see again. you soon. I, you would better. Love, I would love okay. to see you come out of that closet one more time. I will. All right. I will. Good. Who knows Very what soon. I'll be wearing. Ooh. Ooh, there you go. Will it be rubber right. and latex? <laughs> it, it, it could be. Don't give me ideas. <laughs> Don't give me ideas. American my God, Mr. Skull, I'm so afraid to pick all those weeds. Oh, God, that's going to be awful. <laughs> oh, my God.
my goodness, what is that? Holy water. Oh, where'd you get it from? Sorry. <laughs> the holy water. <laughs> well, I've seen your dad that gave it to me before he died. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> oh, is he dead? I don't know. I get so confused. It doesn't matter. <laughs> good night. Have a good night.